Hey everybody, welcome back to Near From Home. In today's video, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to visiting Oktoberfest for the first time from a local's perspective. We've been in Munich for a fair few years now and have visited this legendary festival as much as we could in that time. And we've run the gauntlet. We've made plenty of mistakes and had some absolutely legendary nights out too. I've even gotten to visit some of the secret sections as in typical Munich fashion, my office books a bunch of tables for the whole company, which comes with some wild perks that I'll let you in on later. There is so much more to this festival than meets the eye, and I bet that even I myself am still just scratching the surface. The comment section will let me know, I'm sure. But during our itinerary consultations, link below and on our website, a common collection of questions kept cropping up, so I put together this video to help cover Oktoberfest from the ground up as a local. In that way, I'll try to avoid rehashing the most basic of basic information, the stuff I'm sure you've seen elsewhere, try to lay the foundation as I think I need to, and focus on what I myself would recommend to friends, families, and clients when they visit us during the festival season. Hopefully with these tips under your belt, I can help make your experience truly unforgettable. From when to visit, where to stay, what to wear, and so much more, I've got you covered, so let's get started. First off, let's briefly explain what Oktoberfest actually is, because there are quite a lot of misconceptions. Contrary to popular belief, Oktoberfest isn't just any old beer festival in October. It's a specific, world-renowned event that happens only here in Munich, Germany. There are no other Oktoberfests anywhere else, though uh, some festivals may try to use our brand name. But that's on them. This is because THE Oktoberfest is the proper name for Munich's autumn festival and not just a category of Germanic beer festivals in October. For example, you'll notice that the neighboring city of Stuttgart also holds a beer festival at exactly this time, but rather they call theirs the Cannstatter Volksfest, not daring to risk throwing any hands with the Münchners by ripping off our famous name. In fact, as I love to demonstrate on this channel so much, Germany and especially Bavaria is alive with the sound of beer festivals essentially every weekend from April to October, if you know where to look or what channel to subscribe to, each having their own names and traditions while following a familiar formula of beer tents, traditional music, and top-tier atmosphere. The real reason, though, why our Oktoberfest simply can't be copied is because despite the name, it has almost nothing to do with October or even the season. No, the first Oktoberfest was held in 1810 to celebrate the marriage of our crown prince Ludwig of Bavaria to Princess Theresa of Sachsen Hilburghausen. The citizens of Munich were invited to join the legendary celebration from October 12th to the 17th on the fields in front of the then Munich city gates. The success of this event led to it becoming an annual tradition, everyone essentially agreeing that it was such a good wedding that it should be relived every year forever. <laughs> Which, as strange as that sounds, isn't even the first time I've shown you a never-ending German marriage marriage party before, it's a strangely common story. If you remember back to a previous video, I took you to the Landshuter Hochzeit, a marriage ceremony in Landshut that has been celebrated every four years for 500 years, a true medieval wedding festival. It just seems that when Germans throw a good party, they just keep it going forever. <laughs> Eventually, though, Ludwig's marriage party evolved into the world-famous Oktoberfest that we now know and love today, which is why you can call a party an Oktoberfest party all you want, but if it's not ours, it's not legit. Now that you're all caught up with the Oktoberfest lore, when should you arrive? Well, I've got great news. If you previously thought Oktoberfest was just a category of festival, you don't care about the brand name instead, you're just simply looking for an authentic beer festival, then I'd recommend exactly what I said earlier. Arrive any time between April and October and you'll be falling over these celebrations. I love showing these festivals on the channel because they just don't get the love from international tourists that they deserve. From the humble Almabtrieb cow festivals hidden away in tiny alpine villages, spectacular medieval festivals that I can't get enough of, to fantastic little town folks fests, there is so much to explore. 
So if it's not THE Oktoberfest that you need, you might benefit from some of the real hidden gems. However, if your goal is to go to THE Oktoberfest, the very best, largest and most grand Volksfest on the planet, then you'll need to come to Munich in September. Specifically late September through the very first days of October, though the dates wiggle around a bit so you always need to check. Why September though? Well, because after the first few parties back in the 1800s, everyone agreed that the weather was better in September, which is true. So they moved the festival but didn't really bother changing the name because in essence, it is still the Oktoberfest after all, and I guess it does occur on at least a few days in October, so just leave it. No need to change the signage. Though admittedly, it's pretty confusing. But that's just German culture for you in a nutshell if you ask me. They'll do things that make perfect sense to themselves and just not worry at all about how strange it might look to outsiders completely baffled on the sidelines. I am sure anyone else who has moved here can relate to that. So now you know when to show up, but where exactly should you go? Well, every German village, town or city worth its salt will have a Festivalplatz, and Munich's is Theresienwiese, or Theresa's Meadow. Named such because during that fabled first Oktoberfest, the grounds really were just a regular meadow, then outside the city walls, and since the bride was named Theresa, the meadow was permanently given her name in commemoration. Though, honestly, locals don't really use it very often, preferring to reference this particular place or even Oktoberfest itself as Wiesen. This permanent festival ground then is where all sorts of events take place. The spring festival I mentioned earlier, the winter Tollwood Christmas market that I've covered a few times, but naturally it's most famous for Oktoberfest. The only festival that actually fills the entire grounds to capacity, supporting well over 100,000 people at once, and in 2018, 7.3 million people in total. It is wild. Needless to say then, Oktoberfest can be absolutely packed, along then too with the public transit system, so picking your hotel and the transit route optimally is essential, because after a few litres of strong Oktoberfest beer, a 45 minute commute with two train changes, that's gonna start looking a lot more daunting. For solving that problem then, you have roughly three options. Number one, book early for fair pricing anywhere within walking distance of the meadow. You'll thank me later. But these do book out incredibly quickly and become eye-wateringly expensive, so it's really just not an option for most people. Number two, deceptively, using Google Maps, you'll notice that the meadow is along this U-Bahn line underground train. You can get some great deals here, and it can be a great option, just that, um, well, think about it. Underground stations full of hundreds of thousands of drunk people? That very well might be the seventh circle of hell, so know yourself before booking along this line. It can get packed, it can get loud, and it can get a little stinky. So finally, number three, what I optimally recommend for most people then is just something along this east-west running S-Bahn line, the above ground train. It's a small walk away from the meadow over by Hakobroka station, but it gives you the widest options of trains to the most neighborhoods with the most options for you to choose, so you can get a really good deal and they're not going to sell out immediately like the Uban line. So just pick something east to west along this route and be prepared for that tiny walk from the station. Lastly, now that we know what we're getting into, we have our hotels booked, our transit routes planned, the next question is obviously, when should you arrive? However, this is when people make their gravest mistakes and flush their expensive vacations down the drain, because if you arrive at the wrong time, you are guaranteed to be miserable. Trust me, I've visited this festival wrong a fair few times myself when I first moved here. So listen up and get your calendars out. Naturally, this is somewhat subjective. Experiences will vary. People are going to argue with me in the comments below, and I encourage you to. Please let me know your experiences. But this is Near From Home's Oktoberfest timing strategy on the Near From Home channel to mitigate the most risk and maximize your chance of having the best time of your life. I personally like Monday through Thursday 
day, anytime, just after lunch, until the evening, or as long as I can last. Personally, I usually do around 2pm for a late hearty lunch, let the beers roll in, play some games, ride some rides, dip back into a tent for a final beer and that party atmosphere in the evening, and I try to leave before last call as to avoid the grand exodus when tents start kicking people out. You do not want to be a part of that. If you don't really like the sound of lunch though and you're in more of a dinner mood, try at least to arrive and be settled at your table before 6pm. Because once the music kicks up and people start dancing on the tables, it's going to ruin your Kaiserspätzle, let's say that. To some of you out there, perhaps my suggestion then sounds a little bit disappointing. More lunch and early day focused instead of that full on nightlife vibe that you might have liked. But simply put, I have had some of my wildest October nights imaginable at 6pm on a Wednesday and some of the most boring and frustrating times of my life at 10pm on a Friday. Time doesn't matter as much as you'd think. It's a non-stop party, sun up, sun down. So don't overthink it. Most importantly, unlike a local with a job, as a tourist, you should be using your flexible schedule to your advantage and going during the week when all of us are stuck in our office jobs, well, that's just honestly the most important tip. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they're for the locals and the very large companies that call Munich their home. All of the tables are booked out and they're not going to let you into the tents without a reservation, so just don't risk it. One of the first times I went to Oktoberfest after moving here, it was on a Friday. I didn't understand how the reservation system worked and I ended up walking from one side of the festival to the other, shoulder to shoulder with every other ignorant tourist, unable to do anything. It was really bad, so don't be like me, learn from my mistakes go during the week, use your flexible schedule. But of course that does beg the question, why bother with all that hassle and uncertainty when you could just book a table? Well, tickets and table reservations are a bit of a hassle. So here's the short of it. If you're not really into Oktoberfest and the grand meta of it all, just don't worry. Entrance to the festival is completely free and there is nothing that you need to pre-book. Frankly, as a novice going for the first time, which is exactly who this video is aimed at, if you buy anything before the day, you're very well likely being fleeced purchasing something unnecessary. There are so many up sales and random websites scalping, it's really quite unfortunate, so I rarely recommend it. Maybe this is ultimately a very controversial opinion to tell people not to bother with the tables, let me know in the comments. And I do actually know how to book them. Camille has booked tables at Oktoberfest, Starkbierfest, Fuhlingsfest, all of them. So if you really want to know a bit more of the advanced strategies for how to get the best tables, maybe let us know in the comments below. I'd be happy to make that video if you guys are interested. But at the end of the day, if you follow all of my above tips, schedules and plans from this video, you won't have to worry about spending an extra penny or booking anything ahead of time. Now let's finally talk about what you're going to wear. As if Oktoberfest is famous for one thing, it's beer. But if it's famous for two things, the second must be Trachten, Lederhosen and Dirndl. So what should you be wearing then to this festival? Jeans and a t-shirt, probably. But let's talk about it. The problem is that even medium quality bare minimum Trachten is shockingly expensive to outsiders because Lederhosen and Dirndl are genuinely serious business down here in Bavaria. And as much as the world may lampoon on these outfits, these are not silly party or cheap and tacky Halloween costumes, this is real stuff. Bavarians will wear Tracht casually around the city on the weekends, I've worn mine to birthday parties out in the rural villages, formal business dinners, and full-on Bavarians will even wear Lederhosen and Dirndl to the altar when they're getting married. Since I moved here and wanted to settle down and integrate as much as I could, I decided pretty early on to invest in a good pair of Lederhosen myself, and Camille bought a really nice Dirndl from a boutique in Tegunze. Truth be told, we probably spent about 8 100 euros each on our outfits. Though even then, this is on the low end of true Bavarian tract, and I couldn't wear mine to a wedding. The prices can just be that eye-watering for some formal leather shorts. Most people I know who didn't grow up here 
here in Bavaria end up spending at least a fair few hundred euros to join in and I've never known anyone regret it, but it's a serious financial investment. I say all of this not to dissuade you, but just to make you know that as a tourist, no one in their right mind expects you to be wearing Trachten. It is not a required dress code. We all locals are just looking for any excuse that we can to wear ours, but we're not going to bat an eyelid if we see normal clothes at the festival. Why should we? You're not Bavarian. But if you do love Bavarian beer festival culture and plan on wearing it many, many times, then, you know, go for it. Invest in some real stuff and join in. Secondhand stores are the perfect place to score some amazing deals. In particular, I would recommend the one of Resales near Karlsplatz as really good. But if you're only coming just once, I don't think it's worth it. But you do you. It's your money. You can spend it on whatever you want. What I will say, though, is please don't encourage the sale of buying the cheap garbage from Amazon or Halloween stores or near the train station. It's just waiting for a landfill. It's pretty ugly. It won't help you fit in. God knows that. You'll look more like a tourist or worse, a drunken British stag night out than you will a local. So you'll actually be making yourself look a bit more out of the pack than in it. I just really don't advise anyone wear that stuff. It's just a waste. So either get the good stuff and join in or wear your normal clothes. At least in this local's opinion, that's what you should do. And honestly, that's enough to get you through all the logistics. You know which festival to choose, where to book your hotel, what train and transit line to follow. You've got your schedule and game plan down, and now you also know what to wear. That's it, mate. You've made it to Oktoberfest. So it's time to buy some beer and dive into the party. But before we let you go, let me do a quick lightning round of all my favorite top tips for once you finally breach those festival gates. Number one, money. Oktoberfest is expensive, beer and food cost quite a bit, and the rides and games can quickly add up. Plus, you know, your inhibitions might be a little lower, so you might be spending a little bit more liberally than usual. As a local, I could burn through 120 euros on a night out with Camille in a flash. And since this is Germany, you might want to bring it as cash because card payments are not guaranteed. Two, crowd tips. Use the Oktoberfest barometer website, link in the description below, to find the least crowded times in real time. Now, if you've only got one or two days to go, it's not that helpful, but if you're here for a whole week or if you're a local, I check this thing almost every day, multiple times a day, to optimize when I'm going to show up. So if you're flexible, this is really helpful. Three, security. Don't bring any big bags. Security is taken super seriously. They will turn you away without further notice and not let you bring in your big bag or backpack. They'll send you home and you don't want to have to go back to the hotel to drop it off. Number four, my opinionated tent recommendations. Personally, I avoid the Hofbräu tent. It's the largest and obviously where most of the tourists go because it's the most famous name. Augustina, total classic. How could it not be? But my favorite tent for a date night is Marstall, the Royal Stables. I just love the color palette and vibe. When I'm going with work, we usually book tables at the Schutzenzelt. This is one of the coolest things ever if you can get a table here. There is a gun range on the second floor that is invite only with a table reservation, and I've never seen anyone take their turn firing some rounds before they've had at least two liters. Don't worry though, they are Olympic air rifles, not shotguns, though even then it really surprised me the first time I competed in a drunken shooting competition with my entire office. They even rank you against every single other person and will tell you at the end of the night how good you are giving you a formal certificate and some special pins to the best shooters. I've gotten a pin every time. Oh, and don't forget the Reichart tent. It's a local bakery tent from a famous small Munich specific chain, hilariously themed, offers pretty good pastries, and it's just really different and funky. Great music, quirky vibes, you should check it out. Number six, my opinionated games and rides. My heart is set on the shooting games. I love it. And even when rather drunk, your boy doesn't miss. Drunk me is a good shot. As for rides, you know I love a good old crazy mouse, but a few liters in doing the Olympic rings, pulling some mad G's on those loops, it'll leave you a changed man. I thought I had died. They also have this really weird one called Dr. Archibald, the VR ride, and I don't know. It seems a little bit like a ripoff, but when you're drunk on a roller coaster with a VR headset and it's just madness around you, it's pretty fun. And I think they keep updating what the storyline is every year. Last year it was like volume two. It's really weird. I find it kind of hilarious. Sober me thinks it's a waste of money. Drunk me will go every year. <laughs> 
And then of course, there's these swinging chairs, which I will never do, so don't even ask me. Funnily enough, I've now learned that there's no amount of liquid courage to get me up those things. It's just not happening. But the most fun thing is they have a 45 degree angled conveyor belt that everyone is convinced they can ride. They cannot. Stand in front of this for a few minutes for some of the best slapstick comedy of your life. And so there you have it. Hopefully it's no longer quite so confusing or mystifying and you're excited to have your first Oktoberfest experience. I do hope you found this guide helpful. And hey, if you see me at the festival, don't forget to say hi. Like, comment and subscribe if this has been helpful. Check out some of my other festival content. If you've liked this video and you want to get hyped for some more in-person details, I've got a bunch of great videos for you. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, wherever that might be.